A bit of disappointing news. Despite recent progress, Flight 9 now seems unlikely to launch this week, just as Musk hinted. Still, Flight 9 could feature SpaceX's most advanced flight plan yet, potentially shaping the future of Starship missions. So, why the delay? When might it launch? And what key milestones can we expect? Let's dive into all of it on today's episode of Great SpaceX. Starship Flight 9 is currently the most anticipated launch in the entire space industry. After all, the first two flights of the year, while impressive in their own right, faced significant setbacks. Now with Flight 9 on the horizon, everyone is hoping for a smooth, successful mission that demonstrates how far SpaceX has come with its Starship program. Many predictions initially pointed to a launch this week, especially after Musk posted his usual teaser, Flight Next Week. However, things haven't gone exactly to plan. Shortly after B-14 was moved to the launch pad, it was surprisingly rolled back to the production site. While SpaceX hasn't officially explained why, this usually indicates some kind of unexpected issue or adjustment that needs attention. On the other hand, S-35 remains at the pad undergoing final checks, including installation of its payload and the flight termination system. Realistically, this means that, at best, only one or both stages could be moved to the pad this week, but a full launch is not going to happen within that time frame. Supporting this delay, recent safety alerts and flight notices have begun to indicate a launch window starting on May 27th. The FAA's notice to airmen, or NOTAM, and the Coast Guard's local notice to mariners, or LNM, have both flagged this date for potential activity in the Gulf landing zones, aligning with a possible SpaceX launch. It's important to note that May 26th is Memorial Day, a federal holiday in the U.S. during which most operations, including launch logistics, are paused. So if SpaceX doesn't launch before that, it'll have to wait until after. The good news? This pushes the potential launch window through June 2nd, meaning there's still a chance Flight 9 could lift off before the end of the month. And while many are hoping to see a launch on the 27th, a powerful return after the holiday, it's equally possible that the date slips a few days to allow extra preparation. As always, success is the top priority and SpaceX won't rush it. As for me, I'm predicting a launch on the 30th. What do you think? Drop your prediction in the comments below and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel as we continue tracking SpaceX's exciting journey into the future of spaceflight. As we mentioned earlier, everyone is eagerly awaiting a successful Starship Flight 9 and the anticipation is building. If everything goes according to plan, this flight could mark another major milestone in the evolution of SpaceX's fully reusable launch system. So what exactly will we see if the mission unfolds successfully? Let's break down the full flight script that SpaceX has carefully designed for this critical test flight. First off, the flight is scheduled to take place in the late afternoon at Starbase, with liftoff expected between 6 p.m. and 6.30 p.m. local time. The process really begins about 75 minutes before liftoff when the flight director initiates the final readiness pull. If all systems are green, a go is given to start the propellant loading sequence. The fueling timeline is both precise and efficient. It begins with liquid methane and liquid oxygen loading into ship 35. Around T minus 46 minutes, liquid oxygen begins flowing into the ship, followed closely by methane at T minus 43 minutes. A few minutes later, the B-14 propellant load begins with methane entering at 41 minutes and 22 seconds and liquid oxygen following at 35 minutes and 35 seconds. This cryogenic, these cryogenic fluids are loaded into the massive tanks that power Starship's Raptor engines. By T minus 3 minutes and 20 seconds and T minus 2 minutes and 50 seconds, propellant loading wraps up for both stages. During this window, engine chill down occurs on both the booster and ship. This crucial step prevents thermal shock damage by gradually cooling the engines to match the cryogenic fuel temperatures before ignition. Now, at T minus 30 seconds, the flight director will conduct one final verification to ensure that all systems are still go for launch. Then comes a unique feature. About 10 seconds before liftoff, the deluge system, or flame deflector, activates, spraying high pressure water from beneath the pad to dampen the heat and force of the engine plume. 
It's like a giant steel showerhead, vital to protecting the launch infrastructure from the raw power about to be unleashed. Then comes the moment we've all been waiting for. Three, two, one, liftoff. The 33 Raptor engines on B-14 ignite with a combined force of over 7,000 tons of thrust, lifting Starship off the pad and shaking the Texas coast. What makes this even more exciting is that many of these engines are reused from earlier flights, making this a significant test of SpaceX's reusability goals. As Starship climbs, it will reach max Q, the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure, at around T plus 1 minute and 2 seconds. This is always a critical point in any launch, as it tests the structural integrity of the rocket under peak stress. Starship has passed this point without issue in previous flights, but it still demands precision engineering and thorough preparation. Following this, Starship will continue ascending and accelerating until around T plus 2 minutes and 32 seconds, when the vehicle prepares for MECO, or Main Engine Cutoff. At this moment, 30 of the booster's engines shut down, leaving just the three sensor engines running. This helps maintain stability as the upper stage, Ship 35, ignites its engines. The two stages will then separate using the hot staging ring, a hardware innovation that helps direct heat and pressure from the upper stage's ignition to safely push the ship away from the booster. After separation, the two stages begin distinct journeys with different objectives and challenges ahead. For S-35, the flight proceeds much like previous Starship test flights. Over the next six minutes or so, S-35 will maintain stable operations, steadily climbing toward orbits without any extraordinary maneuvers. The focus here is on ensuring the vehicle's systems remain stable and perform nominally as it ascends beyond Earth's atmosphere. Meanwhile, B-14 embarks on a more dynamic and complex phase of flight. Just after separating from the upper stage, B-14 will initiate a boost back burn at around 2 minutes and 45 seconds. This involves reigniting its middle ring, middle ring engines to slow and stabilize the booster, beginning its controlled descent back toward the landing zone. This burn lasts approximately 45 seconds and ends near T plus 3 minutes and 30 seconds, when engines on the middle and inner rings are sequentially shut down, preparing the booster for its next flight phase. Following the boost back burn, B-14 enters a free fall phase lasting about 3 minutes, during which no engines are firing. This portion of flight is sometimes referred to as transonic as the booster transitions through the speed of sound on its way down. During this free fall, the hot staging ring which facilitated the earlier separation and ignition is jettisoned to reduce mass, improving the efficiency of the final landing maneuvers. As B-14 nears the landing zone, specifically at about T plus 6 minutes and 37 seconds, the landing burn sequence begins. 13 engines, those in the middle and inner rings, ignite to reduce velocity and precisely guide the booster during descent. These engines work in conjunction with the grid fins to ensure controlled steering and braking. Once the booster has slowed sufficiently and is at an appropriate altitude, most of the middle engines shut down, leaving only the three gimbaled engines in the inner ring active to provide fine-tuned control and support the final approach. This flight will mark a notable change from the last four attempts. SpaceX will not attempt to catch B-14 with the Megazilla arms on the launch tower. Instead, the booster will intentionally land in the sea. Although it won't be recovered intact for refurbishment, the controlled water landing simplifies operations, allowing SpaceX to focus resources and attention on the success of Ship 35's orbital mission. While it's a bit sad that B-14 won't have a grand retirement on display like Starhopper did, this step represents an important strategic shift towards streamlined operations for the next phase of Starship development. With B-14's part complete, the spotlight returns to S-35, where the next set of critical mission events will unfold. At around T plus 8 minutes and 44 seconds after approximately 6 minutes of powered flight, the Starship Engine Cutoff, or SECO, will occur. In this step, the vacuum-optimized engines will shut down first, followed by the sea level engines. S-35 will then coast without thrust for roughly 9 minutes as it continues its journey. 
At about 17 or 18 minutes into flight, when S-35 is projected to be over the Indian Ocean, it will perform a payload deployment test. According to SpaceX's disclosures, these payloads will not reach orbit and will subsequently fall back to Earth. Warnings and notifications will be issued well in advance to ensure safety in the landing zones for both the payload and the Starship. After payload deployment, S-35 will spend an additional 30 minutes in orbit conducting another key experiment, the relight of one or more engines in space. This test, first successfully performed on Flight 6, verifies the ability to restart engines after coasting, a critical capability for future missions following those orbital operations at about T plus... 47 minutes, 22 seconds, S-35 will begin its return to Earth, initiating the most challenging phase of the mission, re-entry. During this period, lasting approximately 15 to 16 minutes, the vehicle will experience intense aerodynamic heating with temperatures soaring above 1500 degrees Celsius. The upgraded heat shield system, a major improvement since Starship's early flights, will play a crucial role in protecting the vehicle's structure from thermal damage. In addition to the heat shield, the enhanced forward flaps are designed to improve atmospheric control and help prevent damage experienced in prior re-entries. These flaps allow for better aerodynamic maneuvering and attitude control as Starship transitions from hypersonic speeds down to subsonic flight. At about T plus 1 hour, 6 minutes, and 4 seconds, S-35 will enter the transonic and subsonic flight regimes. Initiating the landing flip maneuver. The flaps adjust the vehicle's attitude to a vertical, preparing it for touchdown. Shortly after, the landing burn begins, with engines firing to slow descent and steer the ship for a gentle splashdown. Thanks to these careful controls, S-35 will softly touch down on the water's surface, concluding the flight. Obviously, we are paying close attention to the Flight 9 launch date as well as the journey it will undertake. Everything depends on what SpaceX is preparing. I hope that after nearly three months, SpaceX has resolved all issues and will reward our patients with a new masterpiece in the aerospace industry. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. I'm excited to share that we've launched a brand new channel in our network. Space Zone. This new channel will dive even deeper into all things SpaceX and the broader aerospace industry, tailored to meet the growing interests of our amazing audience. We'd love for you to subscribe to Space Zone to stay updated with the latest insights and support our mission to bring you even better content. Thank you so much for being part of the journey, and we hope to see you again next time.